Hey everyone, this is Troy Black. So a few minutes late, but I'm gonna jump in and get started. I've got so many things to share with you today. Uh, a couple prophetic words involving Donald Trump, involving the mark of the beast, a word involving uh, DeSantis again. Um, it seems like there's a pattern sometimes with some of these words that the Holy Spirit's been giving me. And I know there's a reason for the pattern. So this is the way I like to look at it. This is kind of the perspective God has given me. Why would God speak over and over about similar things to similar people or the same topic to the same person or through the same person? Y'all let me know if you can't hear me or something like that. But uh, the reason being that this walk with God is a friendship. It's meant to be a relationship. It's not a theology class. It's not, and I'm not saying theology is bad, but it's, it's, this is not a lecture where we sit there and we hear, you know, through the word only, and that's it. This is a relationship where we're meant to interact. And when you're in relationship with somebody, you walk away from a conversation and you have more thoughts about what you talked about. And then you're like, hey, I want to see what they think about this. I want to talk to them about this. And we see this picture happen with God and Abraham in scripture, where God actually comes to Abraham. He's about to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he comes to Abraham and he has a conversation with him about what he's about to do. That That's not typically how we view God, but it should be. Listen, Abraham was a picture of the promise, the new covenant that we are under, we get to partake in. You might be sitting there thinking, well, I'm not Abraham and I don't have the faith of Abraham. I'm not as good as Abraham was. Listen, Jesus made it to where you can come into fellowship with the Father when you believe in what he did on the cross. And I've got this word for some people. Some people you feel inadequate because you are looking at a sin that you committed. You, 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 you're letting a sin make you feel inadequate. And there are times where if we were walking in sin, right, then no, the Lord's not going to bless that. So there, there's a difference between having sinned and continuing to walk in sin and making that your lifestyle, right? But but when you let a sin that you committed in the past make you inadequate or, or put you in this place where you can't hear from God or you're not expecting God to work through you or in your life, you're not expecting the blessings in, that are found in the word. Listen, you're not believing in that moment. Please hear this with grace, but you're not believing what the word of God actually says about the blood of Jesus. It says that love covers a multitude of sins. And it says that Jesus paid the price once and for all, for all of the sins of all humankind. That includes all of your sin. Everything in your past gets to be covered by the blood. And, and you, well, you might say, well, you don't know what mistakes I've made. You don't know what kind of sin I walked through, or you don't know how long I was in that. It's all covered is what the word says. And we have to make a decision, not just the day of salvation where we get saved and we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but every single day we have to make a decision. Am I going to stand on what the word says about the gospel? Am I going to stand on what the word says about the blood of Jesus today and expect the blessings that were promised to Abraham through Abraham that were going to affect the entire world through the gospel eventually, through what Jesus did? Am I, am I going to expect that to apply to me today in faith? Or am I going to shrink back to a place of unbelief? The Lord is calling us up to a place of belief. He's saying, don't shrink back, my people. Don't shrink back. It's time to stand in faith. So that's that's real quick. I've got, so I'm going to get started. A uh, couple things, three announcements, then I'm going to jump right in. First one is uh, I'm going to be talking about a few Trump prophecies today, a couple prophecies about the mark of the beast, a few other things. If you have not seen last week's live stream, there was a prophecy involving St. Patrick's Day and very specific things from the Lord that were fulfilled through something that actually had to do with Donald Trump. That live stream fulfillment like review is all in that live stream from last, last week. And that link is below this video on YouTube in the description. I'll add it to the comments. I'll tag it there later as well. And I'll try to post it on Facebook as well, but it's in the description on the video on YouTube. Please go watch that if you haven't. Especially if you're wondering, do these prophecies get fulfilled? Like, you know, like, are you following up with this stuff? Very accurate. If y'all have not gone and watched that, please go watch it. Um, here's the second announcement. I just revamped my second channel, which is, was called Troy Black Teaching. It was kind of a place for me to put anything I didn't put on this channel. 
I didn't have a lot of vision for that channel other than that, but the Lord recently gave me a new vision for it. I've revamped it, and I actually posted my first new video on that channel. It's all about the Nephilim. It's, a, it's asking the question, are the Nephilim still here? Please click that link and do me a huge favor and go watch that. It would be a big favor to me if you could watch through that whole video. It's about 10 minutes long because that would just help kind of boost that channel again and help get that started. We're going to start posting really cool uh, kind, of, kind of research videos. What we're doing is we're researching top, interesting stories or topics or historical things. We're, we're bringing together the collective theories about that thing. It's not all, it's not all going to be like a deep dive into scripture. Some of it's going to be theories and other things like that, kind of history channel type of stuff. But the last 20% of each of those videos is going to be gospel focused and focused on a spiritual truth that I'm trying to even get in front of unbelievers. So that's the purpose of that. So please, and I believe believers are going to enjoy it as well. It's going to be entertaining and it's going to have some spiritual application. So please do me a huge favor. Click the link below this video on YouTube and go check out that first video about the Nephilim. And if you could watch it all, all the way through, that would mean a lot to me and be a huge boost. So last one is I'm going to be live streaming on Friday at 4 Central on the Elijah Fire channel. That link is not up yet, um, but y'all look for that. I'm going to be live streaming and sharing some more prophecy review and, and talking about things that God has done and the aftermath of it. So let me pray. Let me jump right in. Okay. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would speak through me today. And I know that you are, Lord. I just surrender my words to you. I surrender my lips. I surrender my heart. I surrender my opinion to you, Jesus. Lord, I don't, want, I don't want this to be coming from me. I don't want anything to come from me, Lord. All I want is to be a vessel for you to use. And I want pure motivations. I want pure intentions. I want, at the end of the day, for you to say good job. That's what I want, Lord. So I just ask that you help me to walk humbly before you. Help me to walk humbly even before others and to just be used by you any way that you want. Anything you desire, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. So let me jump in. I got a lot of stuff to share, y'all. <laughs> I believe people are going to get saved today. I believe people are going to get healed today. And I believe there are going to be people getting delivered right here on this stream. This is three. These are, these are three things I heard last night. These are specific words for people either listening now or potentially listening later. Um, this is the first one. There's a young lady watching. Um, the impression I got was that she's under 20 years old, around that age of like 17, 18, potentially. Uh, your mom is into prophecy. Your mom goes to church. You went to church before, but you've been wounded both by the church, what the church has done and what your mom has failed to do for you. And I, I heard the Lord saying this last night. He said, I'm not like that. Now, the Lord is not saying that your mom is wrong about everything. But listen, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But but the Lord is saying this. I'm not like that. That assumption that you've made about me. He's saying that's not me. He's saying the way you've made me out to be in your mind. I'm not like that. I'm gentle and I'm true. And then he said, let me prove it to you. Come home. He said, it's time to come home. Listen, the Lord knows exactly where you are. I don't know why you're watching this right now. But the Lord knows exactly where you are. And he knew you'd be watching this. He's saying, it's time to come home, my daughter. He loves you so much. And I just feel a fierce love from the Lord for you right now. So I'm going to move on to this next one just because I have so much to share. But this is the next thing I heard. There's a young man in his early 20s. Uh, he's an engineer type watching this either now live or later on. And, and this is what the Lord showed me is that you just settled into your new position but the Lord is saying that the unsettling that's coming is actually from him. I heard him say, let me work through it. Don't hold so firmly onto your future that you miss the beautiful, beautiful plan I have for you. I'm raising you up to have the stature of Saul, but the heart of David. I love that picture because Saul was, was taller than everyone else around him, right? So he stood out among men, and yet David was a man after God's own heart. And so the Lord is saying, you're going to have both of these attributes and then the Lord said, the path I lead you on will not be what you expect, but it will be it will be good and worthwhile. 
And he said, David had to go through the wilderness to claim his kingship. Now you can always remember that I haven't forgotten about you. Listen, even if the Lord unsettles some things, even if some of those expectations you had for your future, some of those things that you thought you were stepping into or you are stepping into, even if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted or the way you expected, the Lord is still there. And don't ever forget that the Lord has not forgotten about you, that everything that happens from here on out, I hear the Spirit saying, is from me, it's for your good, it's for your benefit. If you'll lean into me and trust me in that season, I'll open up doors for you that you never even dreamed could be opened. This is the next, this is the last word I heard for a specific person watching. I heard the Lord say, there's a young woman who is just now 71. <laughs> uh, so that may be something you've said about yourself. Uh, it may be something that some other people would say about you. But a young woman, uh, it, it, it's it's kind of funny, but it's also the Lord is, is speaking this prophetically. You've just now turned 71. And I, and the, I heard uh, she's entering her golden age. More fruit will bloom in this season than all the other seasons combined because I've placed you in a place of influence and leadership that has uh, that. And I, I wrote this down wrong, but essentially saying that I've called uh, a place of leadership that I've called out of you. And then he said, don't rely on your own self as you take that next step forward. Just draw unto me and explain everything you deal with to me as you abide in my presence and you will have your answer. I love that. Explain everything. The Lord wants you to come in and spend these lengthy times and they don't have to be lengthy in the natural sense, but he just wants you to deliver everything to him that you're trying to carry. Let him speak to you about it. Let him give you the, the answer. Let him give you the, uh, the wisdom. And then he said, I've crowned you with wisdom. Now submit that wisdom to me and watch it multiply. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'm going to jump in to uh, this is the word I heard on April um, whew, 2nd. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. OK, I, I, I heard this word on April 2nd. It has to do with Donald Trump. It has to do with the mark of the beast. Now, some people are, are potentially going to unsubscribe based on this because it may not be exactly what you're expecting. But there are a few other words I've heard. So I would encourage you to continue listening. Um, but also, y'all. I am not going to share everything that I heard. And here's the reason why is because if I, if I did, I feel like a lot of people uh, would not be happy about it. <laughs> and, and that's not a good motivation to not share something the Lord's asking me to share. But also I feel, I, I feel, and I'm, and I'm trying to share only the things the Lord is leading me to actually share if that makes sense. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. So the Lord began to speak to me on April 2nd about how much time we have before the mark really comes into play. And how much time is left before the end? And I'll say this much about that. Both of those things were a lot longer than I expected. So with that, I'm going to share this. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Every prophetic word I share, whether it be a specific word or whether it be something like this, please don't just take it and run with it. And that should be the same case with everybody under the new covenant covenant who's sharing prophecy because the word says, let one or two prophets prophets speak and let the others pass judgment. So that means we should judge the words we hear, right? First Thessalonians talks about holding on to what's good, not quenching the spirit. Desire, we should desire prophecy. We should listen to prophecy, but we should hold on to the things that are good and reject the things that are evil, right? So are prophets perfect people? The answer is no. But do they hear from, a, does a real true prophet hear from a perfect God? Yes, the Holy Spirit never makes mistakes in what he says and what he shares. But prophets are not perfect. And people that prophesy, and I believe everyone can prophesy because, you know, the, the Bible says, I wish you all would prophesy, right? Every Christian can hear from God. And we should be, in, especially in that personal relationship with the Lord. But listen, we also should not be prideful just because we have a gift of prophecy or just because we heard something from the Lord. We should still walk in humility and let that word be tested by the written word of God, even by people in leadership over us, even by fellow members of the body of Christ. And yes, especially by the Holy Spirit. So if you heard something that was from God or you thought it was from God and then the Holy Spirit keeps saying, no, 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 that wasn't me. You know, then you need to listen to the Holy Spirit and don't just assume that that's your conscience, you know, or fear or something like that. Go into prayer, go into the secret place. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to make it so clear to you what, what the Lord is saying. 
And when we go into the secret place and we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we're abiding in Jesus, we got the presence of God there. We're reading the word. We're staying in the word of God. We're letting it renew our mind. It's going to become so clear what God is actually saying and what he's not. This is what I heard specifically after that. I heard the Lord say, but no one is guaranteed tomorrow. And he said, so live like it's tomorrow, but don't worry about tomorrow. So one thing that happens is when we, uh, I'm gonna, uh, no, no, I need to say this. One thing that can happen is when we only consume stuff that's focused on how soon Jesus is coming. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't watch that stuff. I'm not saying we shouldn't because, you know, we should have an expectation. We should have that as our hope, right? And we should be aware of the times and the signs of the times. But at the same time, when we only consume that stuff and we are receiving it in a way that's just building anxiety in our heart and fear in our minds, it's it's like it quenches our ability to actually share the gospel with people and, and to actually dream for the future, for the things that God has planned in our lives and put in our hearts and put us here to accomplish. But when we say, God, I don't know how much time there is, but I'm going to live like it's tomorrow already, like I have no time left, Right. Like, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, but I'm also not going to worry about tomorrow. And I'm going to focus on what you're saying, what you're doing. Then we can actually strategize along with the Holy Spirit and we can start to take steps in this process that God has planned for us. So I hope that makes sense. This is the next thing I heard that same night. And this is I, I would not have combined these two words except for the Holy Spirit combined them and asked me to share this at the same time. I heard the Lord say, and this makes sense because this is what's happening this week. The Lord said, Donald Trump is severely disoriented. He had uh, he, he has suffered disproportionately to his crimes. And then he, and then the Lord said, down is up. And I heard the Lord say he need, and the Lord explained all this in a minute. So I'm, I'm going to read that. But he said he needs friends, but they will be hard to come by. He needs reinforcements. And I heard the Lord say, I will send him some, but not enough. He's he's a resourceful guy. He's figured it out. And then and. And I don't think by the Lord saying he's figured out, I don't think he's saying he's doing everything right. You know, that's not what he's saying here. Okay. But then I saw, uh, then I heard this, a lack of reliance on the Lord leads to fending for oneself. It has led him to isolation. So if you're wondering what that means specifically, go back and watch last week's live stream because there's a prophetic word that was fulfilled very specifically through some of the things that Donald Trump did and said in the last few weeks. And I believe it has to do with that. And even this next part, uh, then, then I saw a picture of Goofy, and then I saw a picture of Captain Jack Sparrow. The Lord speaks in ways we can understand. So immediately made me think of Disney, uh, Florida, and I heard he's the kind of friend you don't want, you don't want but need. That's all he's got left. I knew the Lord was talking about DeSantis here, and I heard, and then I heard DeSantis is one of those leaders I've raised up for such a time as this. He's going to continue crushing the way he has. And then I heard this phrase: DeSantis is next. What does that mean? This is the impression I got. What is that he, this is from the standpoint of he's the next one God is raising up for this kind of work. And I heard the Lord say the same way I've, I used Trump, I'm using him, though he will go about it differently. He's ready to do my will, even though he doesn't fully know it. <laughs> then I heard this phrase. Uh, the Lord's asked me to share this vision I saw after that. I saw a vision of Wonder Bread, and I saw a vision of the sunbeam bread with the, the girl eating the bread or whatever, these two different types of bread. And I, I heard this phrase from the Lord, I wonder who will win. Like a question, right? Then I saw an image of the four hobbits from the Lord of the Rings. Some people right now are dropping out. They're like, what on earth is this? Listen, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to make a whole lot more sense. And I heard the Lord say, friends look out for each other. True friends do. And then he said, but that's not what you have here. Those, those candidates will swallow each other whole if they need to. So the Lord is not specifically here talking about necessarily Trump and DeSantis. He's talking about the political candidates that are going to be running against each other on the quote unquote same team and what they're willing to do to win essentially. This is what I heard next. There's a little explanation here. I heard the Lord say, I, I wish my body would not focus so much on the mark of the beast. That's a word for somebody. He said, it's not coming for a while yet. Now, does that mean it's not getting 
there's not precursors. Does that mean it's not it's not being developed or whatever whatever it all looks like? No, that, that's not what the Lord is saying here. But then he said, but there are moves of the spirit that need to happen first. It's a distraction from the main issue right now. And he said, steady out and learn to abide and you'll have no problem once it comes. And I got this word a couple years back, 2020, y'all, a, a specific word about the mark. I'm not going to share it here, but I'll give you the gist of it. You can go back and watch it. Just look up my name, Mark of the Beast. You'll find it. And it was all about how the... Those who are abiding in Christ, those who are listening to the Holy Spirit, are not going to be able to be tricked by the devil into taking something that's from him and not from the Lord. And the, the whole emphasis was on the, we try to protect ourselves from things like this, things that are coming through fear, through an emphasis on being afraid, and through knowledge, through knowing enough, like, uh, like I'm, I'm uh, watching everything all the time, I'm afraid. And that's not the way the Lord has designed this walk to work. It's through abiding, and we're not going to have any problem. Why? Because when we abide in Christ and we focus on Him, not on what the devil's doing, but what on God is saying and what God is doing, God is then it's like the Holy Spirit is just going to say, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what I don't want you to do. It's going to be as easy as that. There's not going to be any confusion. Then I heard this. I heard the Lord say this as well, and this is why these two words go together. He said, I wish my body would do the same with their leaders. So he said, I wish my body would not focus so much on the mark of the beast. And then he said, I wish my body would do the same with their leaders, those in the body and those in the government. Why are you so focused on the temporary when the eternal matters far more? I heard the Lord say the eternal is what lasts. Nothing on this earth you will take with you. He said, put your time and money into the things that will last forever and you won't regret it. And then I heard him say, don't be so married to a single individual. He's not talking about marriage here. He's talking about being married to uh, following someone, right? The idea of like of somebody being, being the hope, right? He said, don't be so married to a single individual that you miss what I'm doing today. People move on. He said, just because they were being used by me at one point doesn't mean they are now. And he said, look at Saul. Look at the way my spirit rested on him. And then at the right time, I left him. I still work that way today on the earth. I raise people up for a time, but that doesn't mean they will always be there ready to do what I have for them to do. See, as a church, sometimes we want to get married to the idea of a certain vein of theology, right? Or a certain spiritual leader or a certain denomination or a certain political leader, whatever it may be, right? Or a certain gift that the Lord has given us. And the Lord wants us to be married as the bride to Jesus Christ, the bridegroom. He wants us to, to be so focused on him, so enamored with him, so overcome by him that nothing else matters in comparison. So anytime the Lord says, okay, that was for an old season, this is for a new season, we're okay with it. This is why sometimes the moves of the Spirit create denominations or create movements, right? Like technical, uh, uh, like organizational movements in the body of Christ. But then when the next movement comes, they reject it and they say, that's not of the Lord because it didn't look like what ours looked like. It's because they got married to the idea of what God did then instead of married to God himself. I heard this last night. This is I, I believe this is just a word of encouragement about all this stuff that's going down right now. I saw a stone wall, like a short stone wall. It looked to be like in a wilderness area, potentially the Middle East, but maybe not. And then I saw in this wall was something that's kind of too high. You would have to like climb up it to get over it if you're trying to climb this hill. And then I saw suddenly there was a stairway that was made through the wall, right? So you could just easily walk up through the middle of it. Then I saw this stone walkway that just like wound through the wilderness and made it easy to go through these hills. And I heard the Lord say, I make a way where there is no way. I heard this yesterday. I went for a workout. My wife got me to sign up for a CrossFit gym. It's not CrossFit, but it's a similar thing recently. So it, it is hardcore. It is not easy. Okay. And uh, afterwards, I got in the car and I turned some worship mu music on 
And the Lord began to speak to me as I was driving. So I had to, I just tapped a little like audio record button on my phone. And I just started to say what I was hearing the Lord say and record it. And this is, I, I, I typed it out this morning. So this is what I heard. I heard the Lord say, it's not really about Trump like everyone thinks it is. And when he says everyone here, he's not, he's not talking about everyone in the sense of literally everyone. He's talking about the main portion of people. That was the impression I got. It's not really about Trump like everyone thinks it is. It's about my kingdom. And I hear the Lord saying, yes, for many people listening right now, this is the word the Holy Spirit's been speaking to your spirit this week, this last week. The Lord's confirming it right now. He's saying, yep, you're right on point with what I've been showing you. For many people listening, he said, it's, he said, it's not really about Trump like everyone thinks it is. It's about my kingdom and the powers of darkness attempting to stop and overthrow the things that I'm doing in the earth today. That's why there's such an uproar over the things happening right now, even about the things I've said about Trump and about my people who have placed in power for this season. And then I heard him say, but here's what happens when you start to make too big a deal over, yes, even the people that I'm using in today's world, is that you lose out on the joys and the benefits and the power found in the person, Jesus Christ. I heard him say the person of the Godhead, and I believe he means one person out of the three, right, of the Godhead. And then I heard him say the man of the Trinity. So we know that God has revealed himself through the man, Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ also is the son of God. And when he came to earth, he was fully God and fully man. And because he was man, he was able to sympathize with our weaknesses. And because he was man, he was able to take the punishment for sins that humankind committed upon his own shoulders and upon his own body. I heard him say this next, but I need to stop and say this. I heard, I'm hearing the Lord saying this right now. He's just, he's just saying this for some people listening who have felt you've been downcast. You've been in a place of despair. And the Lord is saying, I came up with a really good plan to save you. It was a very clever plan. I, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying it was so clever. The devil did not even understand what was happening while it was happening. The spiritual bondage was breaking. People were getting set free. People were being redeemed. Lives were being redeemed even before, I hear the Lord saying, even before Christ came. All of that was happening in that moment when Jesus died. And it was there was so much of the wisdom of God bound up in it that the devil couldn't see what was happening. I hear the Lord saying this. The Lord is saying, I can still do the same thing for you today. The Lord is saying, you think you're fighting a, a, a smart devil, but you're not. You're serving a wise God, and he knows what he's doing. The Lord said this last night, uh, uh, yesterday after the workout. I'm going to finish this word I, that, I, that I got. He said, the man of the Trinity, talking about Jesus, the one who reconciled all things to himself through dying, the one who made restitution for the sins of the world for humanity, his name is Jesus. He knows what he's doing in the earth today. And then he said, and if you will get in line with what he's doing and what he's capable, capable of in the earth, yes, even today, even in the middle of the turmoil, all of the struggles, all of the pain and all of the efforts of the enemy, you will see a great deliverance take place. You will see my hand at work, I heard the Lord say. You will see my power flowing through my body, the one I paid everything for, the one I gave up everything for. So yesterday I got home and I got into the house and I started to, you know, just help my wife with the kids, the house. We have five kids now. Our youngest is two and a half months old almost. Our second youngest is right under two years old. His name is Julian. Some of y'all have seen him on these streams before because he's busted in and come and sat on my lap. Um, but yeah, yeah, he lately he has you know how people say the terrible twos. I am not speaking that over him, but man, there have been some days where he's not been acting good. I'll just say that much. And it's been rough because he's not communicating well right now. He's saying a few words, but he's not talking very much. And he's just pointing and crying. And, you know, it is, it's rough. And he wants to be with me all the time. He wants me to be holding him all the time. And 
there are some days where I feel overwhelmed, you know, especially with the new baby and all of the thing, the other kids, the house, everything that we're taking care of and the, you know, the ministry and the different things the Lord has asked me to do. So there's been many days recently where I felt like, man, son, <laughs> I don't have the patience to deal with you right now. And I remember yesterday I was standing there and I looked down at him and he's crying and, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, I've got all these things to take care of that are so important. And he's standing there, he's sitting there, standing there crying, right? And I'm going to have to put all these other things to side to, aside to help him. And I, I can't do that because these things are so important. And I heard the Lord say this, the Holy Spirit suddenly said to me, he's more important than all these things. And I heard the Lord say this yesterday. He said, this is a prophetic picture of what I'm saying to my bride and my church right now. Talking about this, what I'm talking about, this story right here. He said, what I'm doing in the earth today for my bride. Many people don't feel like this is me serving or working for my bride. But this is absolutely for the benefit of the church and the good of others as well. This is absolutely for the benefit of those serving me so that they would know me to a greater extent. So they, they would come to know my ways, even in this season, and that that would set them up and lead them into the next season in victory. You know, you know what I've had, I've had to come, I've had to realize this with my son is that every day that's a struggle is a test for me. And there is a spiritual investment that I'm making when I stop and I play with him and I help him and I love him where he's at. And listen, there's a spiritual test that the bride of Christ, the, the, the church is going through right now with all of the struggles in the world today. The Lord is saying, are you going to make all it all, about all of these things or just about my son and about the people that I am using you to impact today? Because I hear the Lord saying there's and he's saying this with love. But there's a passion in his heart right now. He's saying there's hurting people that I've called you to. There's, there's a hurting nation I've called you to impact. There's a hurting world that I'm calling you to. And that starts with one person at a time. See, see I'm tempted sometimes to think the last season was so much better because I had so much more capacity to get so much more done. And I think that, you know, the church, I feel like we're in that same place. I hear the Lord saying that. Some days we're tempted to think, man, I wish I could go back to 1995 or 2010, whatever it is, you know. And the Lord is saying, no, this is the season I've placed you in my body. This is where I have you and you're here for a reason. Don't get discouraged. Don't let despair set in. Just look to my son right where you're at in the middle of the stresses, in the middle of the turmoil. Let my Holy Spirit lift you up. Let me build you up. Let me empower you. And then you're going to see that I'm setting you up for this next season. And I'm going to use you in power. So I heard today a, <laughs> I heard today another word that has to do with Mark, very short. Uh, and then I'm going to share this thing that's happening later in the year. Um, uh, this thing the Lord warned me about. and But first, I do need to read this passage. This is 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. So here we go. I'm going to look it up right now. I was <laughs> not as prepared today as normal in some ways, but that's okay because the Holy Spirit is here and he is still able to speak. <laughs> So here we go, y'all. This is this is good stuff. The Lord pointed me to this last night. I was just reading the Bible and I heard the Lord say First Peter one, and so I was like, okay, let's let's see what's here. And this is how I read the Bible lately. I I there have been seasons where I'll read through the Bible, you know, like do the whole read through the Bible in a year thing, or just read it through as I'm able to, or I'll read through just the New Testament or something like that. The, the last few years, I've just been in this lengthy season of every time I read the Bible, I look for a prophetic word about where to read. And listen, this is a really good way to start learning to refine the voice of God in your life and the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart. 
because the word gives you a refuge. It gives you essentially a training ground through which you can hear the voice of God. Because if you're going through something, you're praying, you're saying, Lord, I need a... <laughs> I, and I hear this from the Holy Spirit right now. The Lord is going to use this practically, what I'm saying right now, practically to train and teach many people how to hear, not just prophetically, but specific words of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. This is an activation point for four specific words of knowledge, because some people have been asking that question and saying, hey, I, I believe I can hear wisdom from God, or I believe I can get, get a sense of what direction guidance from the Holy Spirit but I don't understand how words of knowledge work. Now, words of knowledge is a gift from the Holy Spirit. So there's a gift that's at work when, when we're receiving those. But there's also a posture that we're able to place ourselves in before the Lord to hear more accurately. And there is a learning to, to understand what his voice sounds like that helps a lot. And that is what I believe the Lord is going to be training people through this, this practical, very simple way. And it's, Lord, this is what I'm dealing with. Do you have a place in scripture do you want me to read? That's it. That question. Is there something in the Bible you want me to read that ha that's going to answer this question or is going to speak into this or is going to give me some wisdom for this? And the Lord will begin to train you how to hear specifically from him. And that's what I heard last night, 1 Peter 1. You know, there were there have been times, there was one time, and I shared this story recently on uh, uh, Mike Signorelli, I think I'm saying his last name right. Uh, on his channel, that video is not out yet, but uh, this, this, where I got, I got this prophetic picture from the Lord. I had this crazy experience with God and I still was like, Lord, I need more confirmation. And it was a crazy experience. And then I sat down on the couch and I said, Lord, uh, I need more confirmation. And immediately I heard a, a specific chapter in Matthew. I opened it up and that chapter is the only place in scripture. I didn't know what was in the chapter is the only place in scripture that talks about the exact same thing I had just seen in the vision. The only place. And it was like immediate confirmation for me. God can do that for you. But listen, here's the cool thing. Even if you miss God in that moment, you're still reading the Bible. <laughs> and that's and the Lord can still speak to you through it. So you might have to laugh and go, well, I think I missed God because this has nothing to do with, you know, what I'm going through. Or this is, you know, this is not specifically speaking to my to my situation or whatever. It's like you can laugh and you can say that's OK. The Lord is OK with that. He's OK with us learning to hear him better. The Lord is absolutely okay with that. But listen, the scripture gives you a training ground. And then here's the other way it does that, is that as you're reading, you can learn to, to understand what God's voice sounds like, and you can learn the nature and the character of God. So as we read the scripture, then when we hear a, a prophetic word or we're praying for guidance on something, we feel like the Lord's giving us direction, but it doesn't agree with the character of God in scripture, right? Right. So if you hear something or there's there's an inclination that comes to your mind, but it's like it's something that's leading you down a path of sin, right? You know immediately that's not God. That's a temptation from the evil one. The Lord is not going to tempt you, the word says, and God is never going to lead you into sin. And God's never going to justify sin. So you immediately know that's not God because you have understood his nature and his character through the word. Here's the third way is that while you're reading, the Holy Spirit can give you a rhema word through the Logos word. You can be reading the Bible and suddenly it's like, Bam, this just spoke to me specifically. It just became alive and it hit me right where I'm at. That's the rhema word. And God can do that through the scripture as well. And it's another way to learn how to hear his voice more clearly. So all tips, I hope that helps. This is 1 Peter 1. It says, to those who reside as strangers scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled, sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Look at this right here. Verse three, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Because of what Jesus did when he died on the cross and then he rose again by the power of God, we are born again to a living hope. So in that moment where I'm looking at Julian, right, and I'm like, all these things I have to take care of, but there's one thing that the Holy Spirit's asking me to do right now. And listen, if I get the if I get the leading of the Holy Spirit right, and I'm able to fulfill what God is asking me to do today, and as us as the church, this is the prophetic picture for us, 
if we say yes to the Holy Spirit in 2023 and 2024 and this decade, even if we let all the other things slip, if we do what God has asked us to do, we're going to be okay and we're going to be set up for the next season. And listen, we're going to be able to walk in hope. Why? Because we didn't look to those things. We didn't look to the celebrities. We didn't look to the politicians. We didn't look to the uh, the market. We didn't look to the banks, whatever it may be. We didn't look to our, our bank account. We didn't look to our uh, 401k, whatever those things are called. I don't even have one. <laughs> my, my retirement plan is whatever Jesus wants me to do next, I'm going to do, you know, like that's, it's like, and I'm not saying everyone needs to do that, but I, it's just like, where, where is our hope? Some of us, we need to take a step back and say, what, what am I putting my hope in for tomorrow, for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years? Listen, we can walk in a living hope when our life is built and revolving around what Jesus did for us on the cross and what he's doing in the earth today. Verse four, to obtain an inheritance, which is imperishable. So now it's painting this picture saying anything else you try to put your hope in is going to perish. And then it says the inheritance we have in him is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen, what's the down payment of that inheritance? This is going to connect some dots for some people. The word says it's the Holy Spirit. So if you say, well, I don't know how to get I don't know how to get my hope in that place. I don't, I don't know how to focus on Jesus more. I don't know how to get away from these other things, the distractions. Get into the secret place. Get filled up with the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in Luke 11, 9 through 13, ask, seek, knock. He said, if you, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Just get filled up with the Spirit. You're not going to satisfy the desires of the flesh. You're going to have your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. He's going to keep pointing us back to Jesus. Then verse 5 says, Who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, listen, apply this to what's happening right now. It says, in this, you greatly rejoice. What Jesus did, the inheritance that's won for us, the hope we get to live in today, the down payment of the Holy Spirit. Listen, we greatly rejoice in all these things, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which perishes through though tested by fire may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The gold is going to perish, (laughs) y'all. Even the gold standard was not good enough. There's a God standard that is good enough. Verse 8, And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. I want to say this for some people. There are some people listening who say, well, God has... He's given me the short end of the stick because I haven't seen angels. I haven't had heaven visitations. I haven't had the gift of prophecy. I haven't had the dreams. I haven't had the supernatural encounters. What does it say here? It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. You can have the joy of the Lord filling your heart without seeing anything. You can have the glory of God resting on your life. How do you get that? Through belief. It's through belief. Jesus said, blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. Man, I get excited sometimes when I don't see things. Why? Because to those who have been given much, much is required. (laughs) there's a responsibility that comes with that. But listen, there's a joy either way if we're walking in belief. This is amazing, y'all. Verse 10, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Does the word say the prophets who prophesied of the list of rules that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries? No. Or that prophesied of the holy standard that would come to you. No, the holy standard is already there. God has always had a holy standard. The word, the, the law points us to Jesus Christ and our need for a savior. And through Jesus Christ came truth and grace. And what did the prophesies, the prophets prophesy about grace? And what are the prophets prophesying about today? The grace of God. 
and by the grace of God. Does that mean we ignore the holy standard? No, but we understand that we can only walk in righteousness. We can only be righteous because of his grace. Verse 11 says, seeking to know what person or time the spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. Listen, this is what the Lord is saying. Everything that I'm doing through my body, I'm doing for someone else. <laughs> Let me say that again. Everything I'm doing th through my body, I'm doing for someone else. That means when God works gifts through an individual, the, his power through an individual, brings revelation to an individual, there's always someone else that gets to benefit from it. If you have an itch on the side of your head, you can't scratch that without the use of your fingers, your hands, right? If I have an itch here, or, you know, it's like, or if I, have, it's like, like I, I have to, the, one part of my body serves the other part, right? Like that's the way it works. As the body of Jesus Christ, we are meant to serve each other. I mean, just literally imagine like a cartoon of like a big toe jumping out, you know, to, to go save the world. Like, I'm going to go save the world. It's like, no, you're not. You're just a toe. <laughs> like, but, but as when the body functions as one in unity and we walk together and we build each other up and we serve one another, suddenly we become an in, in, immovable, unstoppable force full of the Holy Spirit, ready to serve people with the love of Jesus Christ. And we serve each other. <clears throat> It says, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you in these things, which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. So the same way that the Old Testament prophets prophesied about Jesus Christ and they were serving those who would come later, they had no idea what they were saying is what it says. They didn't understand. They're just led by the Spirit and they're just speaking by the Spirit. Listen. We, as the church today, we're serving the next generation without even realizing it. When we're obedient to the Lord today, we're setting things up for the next generation. We're setting things up for our children, for our neighbor's children. Like, like we, we are serving other people sometimes without even realizing it. And sometimes we do, we do understand what we're doing and we're serving people directly in front of us. But other times we don't know why we're doing what God has asked us to, asked us to do. We're just being obedient. And then God is going to eventually reveal to us what the purpose of it was, but we might not understand that purpose until the next life. We might not understand that purpose until we're standing before the Lord for eternity. It says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What should our hope be completely set on? The grace to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So amazing. Look at this right here. It says, verse 23, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and, and enduring word of God. Okay, the word of God being planted in our hearts right now, in the middle of the stresses, in the middle of the difficulties, becomes the power of God in this next season. And it becomes the, the fruit that's being bared in this next season. But we've got to let the word be planted. When I'm standing there, I'm looking at my son and I'm saying, yes, Holy Spirit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help my son right now. I'm going to be patient with him. I'm going to let everything else fall through the cracks if it has to so that I can be the parent you've called me to be. Listen, I'm letting the word that the Holy Spirit spoke to me in that moment say, nope, he's more important right now than all these other things. I'm letting that seed be planted in my heart. And I'm believing based on that, God's going to help me take care of everything else. This is what the church gets to do today. This is a prophetic picture for the church. When we allow the word of God to be planted in our heart in this season, in the middle of the stresses, the same way that Daniel allowed the word of God to be planted firmly in his heart when he was threatened with the lion's den, right? 
when he responded in faith to that and he opened up those windows, he said, I'm going to pray anyways. I'm going to keep praying because it's what God has asked me to do. It's what the, it's what the, the scriptures that I've, I've studied my whole life, it's what they've asked me to do, right? This is, this is the word of God that's been planted in my heart. Listen, they tried to strip that word out of his heart in Babylon because they tried to teach him the ways of Babylon. But he said, I'm not going to allow the word to be stripped out of my heart. And that word, that seed that was planted became a life bearing plant bore fruit. What, what do we see? We see the protection of God step in the same way. It says in this chapter here, verse five, who are protected by the power of God through faith. Listen, Daniel was protected by the power of God. And then when he, the fruit that was born out of that, when we see the power of God at work, the fruit was not Daniel being saved from the lions. That was the power. The fruit was when the king turns around and says, okay, everybody better serve the, the God of Daniel now because all these other gods are, are terrible. <laughs> they can't do this, right? He's like, well, <laughs> well, look, look what happened. You know, like Daniel's right. Suddenly God used Daniel and, and his power working through him once the seed was planted and he did not allow it to be uprooted. And he stood firmly on it through the stresses and through the trials and even through persecution and even through punishment of death. He stood on the word of God and he said yes to the Holy Spirit in that moment. What do we see? A nation was preached to. The word of God was preached to a nation through that event. Through a secular nation. To a secular nation. Verse 24 says, For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory is like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. The same word that Paul is talking, sorry, Peter is talking about here is the word that was preached to us, and it's the word that we're standing on. And the grass of 2023 is going to fade away, but the word is going to remain. And that's the test. Are we standing on that word? Is our hope in that word? Is our hope in what God is doing in this season? Listen, when it is, we are not going to be shaken up by the news. We're not going to be shaken up by anything that comes anything that comes our way. Anything that happens in this nation, in the nation you're in, anywhere in the earth, anything is happening. We're not going to be shaken up by it. Now, can we be sorrowful? Can we, will we be saddened by it? Absolutely. That doesn't. It, we're not robots, right? We're still human beings, but we're not blown over by the winds and the waves. We're not toppled. We stand there and listen. During a storm, who who makes all the impact during a storm? It's the place that's still open. It's the place that the electricity is still on, right? If a town gets hit by a massive storm and there's one big building that has all the lights on and all the power and all the water running or something, everybody's going to go there. This is a picture of the church today. In a hopeless, dark world, the church still has its lights on. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a building or a physical church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We still have the lights on, the water's still running, there's still food, there's still shelter. We're saying, hey, come here. We've got hope. We've got something that everybody needs. And there's protection in his presence. This is what I heard today. I heard the Lord say this about the mark of the beast, okay? Getting back to what I shared at the very beginning. I heard the Lord say about the mark, there is a buildup that has to happen first that people are missing. And he said, and so there's this thing that has to happen. There's this buildup. There, there are events. There's moves of the spirit. There's things that God is doing. Now, listen, even this, yes, take it to the Lord in prayer. If God ever shows you differently, listen to the Holy Spirit above me. If the word argues against what I'm saying, listen to the word before me. Okay. But I'm submitting this to you as a prophetic word from the Lord. There's a buildup that has to happen first that people are missing. Not, not everybody, but the Lord is saying all this. Why? To refocus us to say, Hey, focus on what really matters. That's where the joy comes back. I, I want to share this picture the Lord is giving me. Have you ever watched a movie 
where it seems like everything's going wrong. And then in the last like five minutes of the film, there's like a montage, there's music playing and, it, and everything just comes together. And like all these things are working together and everything just gets lined up. And by the end of it, everything's right. Everything's fixed. I, I, I got this picture from the Lord. This is what some of those listening have been longing for is this season of healing, this season of things working together correctly. And I, this is the picture I'm getting from the Lord, is that if we will align ourselves with what the Holy Spirit is doing and saying, and we will set our hopes on what Jesus has already done and not take our hopes off of that, this is what the rest of our lives gets to look like. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is constantly healing those he's walking with. He's constantly perfecting in the sense of sanctifying those he's he's walking with he's he's constantly protecting those he's walking with those who are abiding in christ listen and then that same healing power and that same sanctifying power and that same uh protection and provision becomes a blessing for every other person that's around us everyone else we're walking with mm. this is Something I heard, the Lord said there's a buildup that has to happen first that people are missing. And then specifically, this is something I heard on February 27th. I'm going to go ahead and share it because uh, this, I, I felt led by the Lord to share this today. It doesn't really have, have much to do with everything else, but something happening later in the year. And I heard the Lord say, this is part of that, part of that buildup. So we are going to see, what did Jesus say? Wars and rumors of wars, right? There's going to be a uh, uh, like birth pains in the earth leading up to Jesus's return. We're going to keep seeing those. There's going to be ebbs and flows. There are going to be seasons where there's more or less. I believe the last three years, there has been a lot more, right? We've seen so many things happening. This is one of those things. I don't fully understand this word. I'm just going to share it as it is. If the Lord gives me more insight into it while I'm sharing it, then I'll share that. But this is what I saw. Okay. This is a, this is a word of knowledge. I heard it on February 27th. I saw this vision of a large, intricate silver perf perfume bottle, and I heard a sweet-smelling incense. I heard the Lord say, this is a word of knowledge about what's coming later in the year. And he said, I'm showing you up front ahead of time so that when it comes, you know how to handle it. And then I saw what looked like a pu perfumery, um, like, like an old shop where they would sell perfume. I think that's what they're called. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> And, and I knew that this perfumery, as I saw it, represented the universe, okay? And so all of the, let, let me give some context here. When I hear words like this that are longer and I see visions and stuff, most of the time I am just spending time with the Lord. I've been in worship. I've got worship music playing. I'm just, I'm crying out to Jesus. I'm loving on him. And then sometimes the Lord will, the presence of God will come over me. And then I'll begin to see these things and hear these things from the Lord. So that's the context here. But still, even all of this, run it by the Holy Spirit. If the Lord tells you differently, go with what he says. Or if the word shows you differently, go with what it says. But this perfumery, I knew it re represented the universe, right? And in the middle was this station where this vat of liquid was located. And I saw the globe, like the earth, being lifted out of the liquid with metal tongs. Like someone reached into this, this vat of perfume or liquid and reached and pulled it out, right? And then I saw the earth nearly all the way covered in like a clay shell, but not all the way. There was pieces missing. And then I saw an electricity ball with electricity in it. Have you ever seen one of those glass balls with the electricity inside? Okay. So all of this is prophetic imagery. Hopefully it's going to make a little bit more sense in a second. These are The Lord sometimes will give me puzzle pieces of a word and then he'll give me the word, right? And I saw the outer shell collapsing on this, uh, this, this thing, this electricity ball, right? And then, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nope, I heard the outer shell is collapsing. A force field like ray, its structure breaking down. And then I and then I saw a picture of a lunar moth. So a lunar moth, I don't think they have anything to do with nighttime, but they've got that, that word, you know, lunar in it. And then I saw this globe with a house on top that was exaggerated in size. And it was representing, as soon as I saw it, it was, I knew it was representing the modern home and the modern society at work. And I heard the Lord say greenhouse gas emissions. And then he said, this is related in a way. 
He said, the same people that stress about that will stress about this one. And then he said, and then I heard this, a total failure on the part of the government and the nations involved with this, completely ignoring the facts is what I heard him say. So some part of the government or the nations involved with this, whatever this thing that's happening, or that this is probably something all that's been happening that they're going to notice and they're going to, it's going to come out in the news or whatever. It's not necessarily something that's going to happen, but could be something that has been that that's going to, you know, become uh, like come out in the light or come in the news or whatever. Anyways, but, it, but he's saying the total failure on the part of the government and the nations involved with this completely ignoring the facts. And then he said a shaking of world foundations is on its way but stress not. This is Psalms 104, five. Okay. That was the word of knowledge. That's what I heard. And I believe this actually has a lot to do with what I've been talking about today. I didn't realize it at the time. The Lord just told me to share this, but it really does go hand in hand because here's the thing, whether you hear a word of knowledge about something before it happens or not, doesn't matter if it still happens where there's still the potential for, us to freak out along with the world, right? But God is holding everything together. And I hear the Lord saying this right now. I haven't stopped holding everything together. I haven't let one thing slip. The Lord is saying, I haven't let one thing slip. I haven't let anything go. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to, I hear the Lord saying, you don't need to fear the failures of the times. That's what the scientists are worried about, right? Right. Oh, we failed in this way. We messed up over here. And now we're doing this. Now this industry is ruining the world in this way. Like all these things. Now, does that mean we shouldn't take care of the world? No, we should. We should be good stewards of this world, right? And we should be wise in the way we we participate in this world. But at the same time, we don't have to fear the failures of the times the same way that the world does. We don't have to be afraid of those things. This is why Psalms 104 Five says, he established the earth upon its foundations, talking about God, so that it will not totter forever and ever. When is the world going to go away? When God decides, right? <laughs> but until that time, he's holding it in his hands. Proverbs 8, 27 says, when he established the heavens, I, talking about wisdom, was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made the fir- the firm, the skies above, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set a boundary for the sea so that the water would not violate his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Listen, God did all of these things. He hasn't forgotten how to do these things. Nothing has nothing has slipped through his grasp. Nothing has slipped through his fingers. Luke 12, 25 to 26. Listen, and I feel this from the spirit. This is applying, yes, to what's happening in the world, what's happening in uh, the, the realm of science, but also what's happening in this nation politically and in the political arena right now. Nothing is slipping through my hands, I hear the Lord saying. There's nothing you have to fear. <clears throat> Luke 12, 25 says, And which of you by worrying can add a day to his lifespan? Therefore, if you cannot do even a very little thing, why do you worry about the other things? What, what should we do when we start to worry or we start to fear, or we start to be afraid? And this is a fear that uh, the Lord is showing me right now that some people have who are listening. The Lord is, is, is showing me that some people are holding on to this fear of, Troy, I hear everything you're saying, and this sounds great, but I haven't done this and I failed at it and I, I've wasted time, right? Like this idea of like, I haven't abided, I, I, I've been focusing on these things, you know, and it's okay to, to watch news. It's okay to follow things. It's okay to do those things, but we need to make sure we're not doing those things out of fear and that we're being led by the spirit in doing that. Because if we, if there's ever a season when the Lord says, no, you need to take a break from that, or, or you're watching too much news or whatever it is, the Holy Spirit's going to tell us that, right? So we just need to have a balance. And that balance is the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So I'm not saying that all those things are always hundred percent wrong to do. Right. And I hope y'all can hear that. But some people have this fear of like, try, I've wasted this time. And I, I hear the Lord just literally pointing that out to me right now. And, and, and the Lord is saying, there's grace for you in this season and in, in this moment. My grace is enough for you. I hear the Lord say, my grace hasn't failed you. The Lord is saying, hold on to my faithfulness and move forward. You can move forward in faith because of what I've done. Y'all, can I just be honest for a second? 
I have to do the exact same thing. I don't get to get on here and share words from the Lord because I've had a perfect week or because I've fasted for the, the, the last week straight or you know, it's like I get to get, get on here and share and be obedient to what the Holy Spirit has asked me to do because of the grace of God. Literally, it all goes back to what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. That's good news because that means no matter what came before this moment in my life, I get to move forward in faith and victory because what he did never changes. And even when I'm unfaithful, he remains faithful. And by his grace, I get to walk right back into the plan he has for me. And I get to be healed by the Holy Spirit, be changed by his love, be transformed by the renewing of my mind through what the word says. And I get to walk in victory today through a real relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what Revelation 8, 3 says. So the, when we're worried, what do we get to do, right? We get to take our worries to the Lord. We get to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. And listen, he hears every single prayer and he doesn't forget about one thing. This is Revelation 8, 3. Another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer. And much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense ascended from the angel's hand with the prayers of the saints before God. God doesn't miss one prayer. Matthew 6, 7. When you are praying, do not use thoughtless rep repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. The Lord's not after this like big lofty, like devoted life, you know, like quote unquote devoted. <laughs> He's after a relationship. We can be honest with him, but we need to be honest with him. We need to be transparent with him. I saw this that same night on February uh, 27th when I heard this word. I was laying down to bed that night and I began to see a vision from the Lord of a metal heart with these intricate designs on it and the shape. It was like a, a thick locket, but it was large. And I heard the Lord say, this is impression I got, actually. This is impression from the Lord. It's like it just came to me as if this was this award that they gave to someone, but it was undeserved. And I believe this has to do with this thing that's happening later this year. And then, and, and so that I'm just going to throw that in there. But this is a vision I got of Jesus on January 23rd, y'all. There was so much peace when I saw this. It was like the peace of God just came over me. And it's like I just wanted to stay in that place. You know, like <laughs> this is what I saw. I saw Jesus at a chalkboard. He was drawing on the board with his finger, like drawing on the chalkboard, right? But as he was drawing with his finger, it was like he had a piece of chalk, you know, and it was it was leaving a mark, right? He was drawing a picture of the earth. And then I saw him draw a circle. It looked almost like a shield, but he drew this circle around the whole earth. And then I saw as he continued to draw a picture of the whole galaxy. And in that moment, as I saw him drawing this, I knew the Lord was saying, I've got my hands around everything. I'm holding it all together. I hear the Lord saying this right now. I am the shield you've been looking for. Talking about Jesus. I am the shield you've been looking for. This is the picture the Lord has given me. You know, when uh, Jesus was a couple years old, I believe, and the Magi came, they gave him these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
And there's this idea of value and purity and a sweet smelling aroma. that go hand in hand. I hear the Lord saying this, just empty out all the junk. And he's not saying that in a harsh way, but a loving way. He's saying, let it go. The things that are not from me. Let it go in this season. Even if it, listen, the Lord's saying, even if it takes time. Keep bringing it back to me. Keep bringing it up in conversation with me. Keep letting me speak into that. And you're going to watch as it begins to fall off of you. And suddenly you're going to notice that those areas of your life that at one point were dragging you down are going to become a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. And I hear the Lord saying this, and you're going to start recognizing the value that in, in your life that was already there. I've already valued you far above all of these other things. You know, the same way I looked at my son in that moment and the Holy Spirit spoke to me of his value and how he was so much more important than all these other things. The Lord is saying, that's how I see you right now, my children. You are the valuable one. For many people listening, you were the one, you were the one that Jesus left the 99 to find at one point. You are the valuable one. Listen, Jesus wants to do that same thing for for somebody else through you. He wants to he wants to to work through you and me to come to somebody else so that he can come to somebody else and say I'm I have come for you. I came to get you. I didn't I didn't leave you where you were. I was thinking about you. The Lord does that through his through his church. You know, the most beautiful moments in my life, if I had to pick a, a, a moment, right? The most beautiful moments are the moments where I knew it was just me and Jesus. There was a moment where I, I was on an airplane this last year and I had a vision of Jesus just walking down the aisle. And it was like nobody else in that plane mattered in the sense of like, I forgot they were there. You know, it was just, it was so beautiful. And it was, there was so much just like immense peace and joy and an understanding of like, this is why I'm here. And many listening will understand what that, what I'm, what I'm referring to when I say that, because you've had moments like that where it's just like you just sense the presence of Jesus and it's, it's all that really matters. And there's going to be a moment where we all stand before the Lord eventually. And listen, we need to start focusing on that moment more than we do. Because it really matters. Even though it's going to happen then, it matters now. And that's what's going to give us the joy. You know, Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him. Like that's what's going to give us the joy, being with him and understanding how wonderful it is, how amazing it is. Like That's going to give us the joy to endure the trials that we're in right now. The glory set before us is far more valuable. And the things that we're walking through, they're not even worthy to be compared with that. What is the glory set before us? It's him. <laughs> it's being in his presence for eternity. I'm going to pray just that every person listening would be so made so aware of the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would make this so real to every person. The presence of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ wanting to walk with us every day, being right here in the room with us through the presence of the Holy Spirit.
<laughs> Lord, if it takes visions, if it takes dreams, if it takes words of knowledge or prophecy, or if it takes a manifestation of the glory, whatever it is, Lord, I ask that you would make us so aware of your presence, Jesus. So that we will be drawn into the secret place, that we will be drawn into a place of abiding in you. So that every other area of our life can be affected by this right here. by your presence, by your peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lord, if there are specific things that came to people's minds as they were listening today that they've been struggling through something that like a, a, an area where it's something that they've been unable to get free from, unable to get out of, or even a mindset, a stronghold in the mind, a desire of the heart, a habit in the body, whatever it is, Lord, I ask for deliverance right now where needed and I ask for freedom through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. If truth needs to be spoken into that situation, Father, I ask that your truth would come through the presence, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, and even through others, Lord. That through the truth and through the presence of the Holy Spirit, that freedom would just happen like that because of your grace. Not because of struggling, not because of striving, not because of fear, but because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Because of the cross. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love y'all so much. Who, uh, man. <laughs> Who, man. I, I'm just so grateful that y'all joined me today, but also just um, that y'all join me for these live streams. I know they're long. This is uh, Some people complain about the length, but it's, it's, this is what God has asked me to do on these live streams, so I try to be obedient to that. And I try to make the other videos as short as I can so that people can actually hear the full word and the full message and stuff. Uh, Damian Clayton says, if I don't feel the Holy Spirit, does that mean something is wrong? Um, Damian, I would say we're not here for a feeling. You're not going to feel the Holy Spirit 100% of the time. Now, some people do. But if you're not, that doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. But if you never feel the Spirit, then I would say, yes, there's something that God wants to do in your life that hasn't happened yet or needs to rehappen, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because there are going to be evidences when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're filled up with the Spirit, as the Scripture says, there are going to be evidences of the Spirit's work in our life. One of those things, um, I, I will say this, one of those evidences is the fruit of the Spirit. So sometimes... Uh, we get upset because we're not feeling a po the power of God. We're not feeling like a supernatural power in our body. But that's not always the thing we should be looking for. If you are experiencing the peace of God in your heart and the love of God and the joy of God, that is an evidence of the Holy Spirit and His presence. But if you're not even experiencing those things, then yes, there's, there is a problem there. And my encouragement to you would be to pray and ask God to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And even if that's happened to you before, it's okay to pray again. It's okay to be refilled up because it's, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I like to look at it as a relationship. And I just interviewed uh, Stephen Strang from uh, CEO of Charisma Magazine, and that video is going to be posted pretty soon. Uh, and that's the same thing he said the other day. And it was such a good reminder. You know, it's, it's that you, you can always work on a relationship, right? So we shouldn't just be like, well, I was filled years ago, and so I've got everything I need, or I was saved years ago, so I've got everything I need. It's like, no, we can ask, you know, if 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 we are if we are know that we're needing something, we can ask. And that's I encourage you to go read Luke 11, 9 through 13. It's very clear there that we should ask, seek, and knock. So anyone that tells you not to seek the Holy Spirit, not to ask, not to seek, you know, or not to knock to knock, keep knocking on that door, it's like they haven't read that verse or they're ignoring it. It's so very clear that God wants to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And listen, you do not have to be afraid of seeking the Holy Spirit or seeking 
you know, even a greater experience with the spirit. Listen, as long as your heart is in the right place. Um, so I would encourage you to look at the, the motivations of the heart and exam and say, Lord, examine my heart. See, you know, if there's anything there that needs to be corrected. But then also you can seek the Holy Spirit like a child would not out of fear, you know, and, and not out of uh, even frustration, but out of faith means, hey, I know it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm expecting it. I know it and I'm just going to receive it by faith. Yes, it's going to happen. And I'm not going to stop expecting that. And then it is going to. So, yeah, I see your your uh, your response there. But, yeah, it absolutely is going to happen. Um, Jordan says, how do you find your secret place if you have a noisy, chaotic life? I'm struggling trying to find a quiet place to be with the Lord and abide with him. Man, that's been my life recently, Jordan, with five kids. And like I said earlier, two little ones and so much going on. This is what I found to be true is that there are seasons where I have the capacity to spend hours with the Lord every day, you know, like hours in worship, or hours in prayer, or hours in the word. There are other seasons where I don't have the capacity to do that because I get to the end of my day and I'm like, I got 20 minutes or I got 10 minutes. Listen, give God the time you have and don't come thinking I have to earn my way into the presence of God. You can get into the secret place in two seconds or less. You know, if you come from the perspective of, I'm coming covered by the blood and that's all I need to come into the throne room of God. You know, Paul writes, uh, come boldly before the throne room of grace. Boldly means like you're strutting in like a child, right? Like oh, I'm coming in. Yeah, because I'm covered by the blood. I don't need to worry about trying to earn or strive my way into your presence. Like when you expect to come into the presence of God, you're like, I'm here, God. You're, you're here. We're here. You know, it's like it was that easy. It is that easy. When we, when we by faith receive what the word says about you know, it says we're seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. If you're already seated next to him in heavenly places, you don't have to try to, to get there because you're already there. But we have to believe that we're there by faith in order to receive the benefits of being there, if that makes sense. So sometimes it just takes a, a mind, a mind, a like a perspective shift, and it doesn't always take a lot of time. But when we come boldly before the throne room of grace in that sense and say, hey, I, I, God, I'm going to give you the time I have. You know, then it's like I, I'm setting my mind on you. I'm setting my eyes on you. I'm I'm just going to enjoy you, and the Lord can do a lot in a short period of time. And Ina says, Jordan, middle of the night. Honestly, Jordan, this is what I had to do for a while. There there was a season where I was getting less sleep because I wanted more of God's presence in my life, and I and it was like the only time I had was well, the kids were in bed, my wife was in bed. And I could have gone to bed, but I was like, hey, I am being drawn into the presence of God. If the Holy Spirit tells you to go to bed, go to bed. If the Holy Spirit says, hey, come spend time with me, it's a, it, like it's better to spend time with him. And it's going to be so worth it. Um, so there, that's, that is also an option. <laughs> uh <laughs> Okay, Kayla says, how do you hear God's voice through the spirit and your conscience? Question mark. I have different reasons for why, but I just don't feel like I'm hearing from God. Um, yeah, I, I typically, I mean, we hear the voice of God through our spirit. Unless God sends an angel or something like that to speak to us, that's different. Okay, that's going to be external. Or if you hear the audible voice of God, that may be external in the sense of like, you know, uh, when Jesus was baptized, they, they heard a voice out of heaven, right? Or, or, or uh, Saul on the road to Damascus heard a voice, you know, like speaking to him. It's like those are external things. But the Holy Spirit living inside of us, when his still small voice is an internal voice. And one way that I would describe it, not everyone would describe it this way, but it's almost like it's like God is speaking to you in your heart is kind of how it feels. It's like inside of my spirit. I know this is what I'm hearing and that's being communicated to my soul or my mind. My thoughts is coming into my mind as thoughts. And that's why sometimes your spirit gets something, but your mind hasn't gotten it yet. Your soul hasn't gotten it yet. And it's like, I, I understand that this is the way it is. I, I, I got this. That's what, so when I say that I got an impression of something, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, I just had this knowing, but I didn't hear it in, uh, you know, language in my mind, like in thoughts yet. Right. It's just like I knew that this was the truth. I knew this, this is what God was saying. That's the that's the impression state, right? But but oftentimes the Holy Spirit will take it a step further and you'll begin to hear his voice 
as actual thoughts, but it's like, it's not just like, it doesn't feel the same. And, and I'm, I could get into trouble saying it this way, but it doesn't feel the same as like, oh, I'm just hit, sitting here thinking. No, instead I'm focusing my eyes on him and I can sense that this is coming from God, if that makes sense. And how do I, how do I sense that? A lot of times it's good to ask for confirmation. If you're not sure, if you're like, are these my thoughts? Is this God? Is this like something else? Right. It's like, if you're not sure, ask for confirmation. Gideon said, God, an angel came to me and told me what you were going to do, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, he literally had an angel stand before him and tell him, and he still needed some confirmation. God was okay with that. God confirmed it. What is the confirmation God typically uses for me? And I believe he uses this for a lot of people. A lot of times when I'm hearing the voice of God, I will have the presence of God. It's like the presence of God comes and rests on me. Now that's not everyone's going to have that experience. And listen, I did not have that experience for a long time. Okay. It was probably eight years of, of hearing from God that that ha wasn't happening yet, but I was learning to hear the voice of God. But what did happen every time there was the peace of God. I might not have felt like the power of God come over me and this, you know, physical sensation of the, of the presence of God, but the presence was there in the sense of I had the peace of God in my heart. So when you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's always, listen, even if it's a warning or something, it's always going to come with the peace of God, the fruit of the Spirit. But if you're hearing something and it's like, oh man, I'm so afraid because I heard this, or it's making me so anxious while I'm hearing it. Listen, if it's coming with anxiety or coming with fear or coming with stress or something like that, absolutely, immediately I reject that. Immediately. Or I put it on the shelf and I pray and say, God, am I just not receiving this right or something like that? Because if if it's coming with all of that, it's an evidence it's not coming from God. Because why? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Does that? I hope that helps. But actually, Kaylin, to answer your question a little further, your conscience and the voice of the Holy Spirit are two different things. <laughs> so this is getting into the deep side of this. You know, obviously, I'm not going to go way far into it. But sometimes your conscience will tell you one thing and the Holy Spirit will tell you something different. And most of the time when that happens for me, my conscience is telling me, Oh no, that's wrong because I'm walking in a spirit of legalism, not, you know, maybe not in an actual spirit, but just in the sense of legalism, you know, and then the Holy Spirit's trying to set me free from that. And he's saying, no, Troy, that is actually just a tradition that you put on yourself. And I didn't ask you to do that, you know, or whatever it may be. Now there's other times where a conscience has been seared and the con your conscience is telling you, oh, this is okay. And the Holy Spirit has to say, no, that's not okay. And the conscience is, is, you know, that's when there's a, that's when there's a difference on the other side and your conscience is okay with the sin, but the Lord is having to teach your conscience what is right and what's wrong again. Robert Morris has a really good teaching on that. I don't know what it's called, but he does teach about that. And you may be able to find it if you look for it. The difference between the Holy Spirit and your conscience. Um, Ivy Pearson says, Troy, how to have more obedience. Surrender every thought to the Holy Spirit. So when you have a thought, you have a desire, you have a temptation, anything that you feel like maybe the Lord doesn't want me to do this, or maybe this wouldn't be right, literally talk out loud to the Holy Spirit about it. Say, Lord, this is, this is, this is what I'm being tempted by right now. This is what I'm thinking about doing right now. You know, and then wait. And this is such an amazing place for the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to us. Because this is how I got free from a lot of sin. You know, the, a lot of sin fell off of my life overnight when I got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, things like addiction to pornography, uh, things like um, just complete, utter, total selfishness, like all, my whole life revolved around me in every way. And then, you know, things like that, anger, uh, hopelessness, um, shame, all these things like fell off of me overnight. And there were other things that it took longer, right? And and the Lord's still working in my life. Like I'm not a perfect person, right? I'm still being sanctified, but there were things in the next few years that I had dealt with for a long time that I saw those things begin to fall off, but it was through a process of me being honest with the Lord about it saying, Lord, this is what I'm being tempted by. This is what I'm dealing with. And then the Holy Spirit saying, Troy, my grace is sufficient for you right now. And I would begin to hear from the Lord. And he would say, and literally, sometimes he would say, Troy, I've already forgiven you for that because of what Jesus did on the cross. And that would blow my mind in that moment. I'd be like, what? Like, 
Lord, like, don't you see where I'm at? I feel so ashamed right now. I feel so dirty. And the Lord be like, you're already forgiven based on what Jesus did. And listen, do you want to know what that caused me to do? It didn't cause me to go, oh, yay, throw my hands up. I'm going to go sin because I'm forgiven. No, it was like my heart melted in that moment because I knew it was him. And my heart melted. And I said, wow, what a love God has for me. And I didn't go, I didn't even go back into it. I said, that was the freedom I needed when I realized like, whoa, the grace of God is so powerful. I don't even need to go down there. Why? Because I'm experiencing the love and the acceptance of the father right here. And that's enough. That's all I needed. The devil doesn't have anything to tempt me with anymore because I'm being fulfilled through the word of God and through the presence of God right here. Let the Holy Spirit do that, but you got to be honest with him. Now, if you're saying obedience in the sense of not, not sinning, but rather doing what God is calling you to do and asking you to do and actually walking that out, I would say it's the same process, just a little slightly different practically, but it's the same process of, of giving it back to the Lord and saying, God, I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, I, like I, I feel like this is what you're leading me to do. I don't want to do it but Lord, help me to do this. You know, just just literally asking for help. Holy Spirit, help me to say yes. Help help me to walk in obedience. And the Holy Spirit will empower you to do that. All right. One more question. Then I got to jump off. Second sense that Julian is about to wake up. (laughs) I know he's about to wake up. He's in the room back here. (laughs) He's taking his nap. Okay, April says, how do I let go of unbelief and fear that are tied together like they're attacking my mind, even though I know in my heart what the truth is? April, that could be a uh, it could be a, an attack from the enemy, it could be spiritual warfare. And if so, I would get someone to pray for you uh, for just a simple deliverance in the sense of to stop those attacks. And I'm going to pray for you right now. And then I'll, I'll finish answering your question. But Holy Spirit, if there's any attack of the enemy, any, any thoughts that the enemy are throwing or any fiery darts or anything like that, that the enemy is throwing at April, I just speak against that. And I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus and I command it to stop in Jesus name. It cannot continue. It has to cease right where it is. And she gets to have thoughts that are full of peace, that are full of joy, full of the presence of God. They're from the spirit of God in Jesus name. Um, But uh, letting go of the unbelief and the fear that are tied together, April, I would uh, encourage you to do the same thing that uh, the man in the gospels says to Jesus, where he says, Lord, I do believe, right? He's having, he had, he knew what the truth was in his heart, but he said, help my unbelief. So he's meaning, but there's still a part of my mind that's not grasp, not fully grasping it yet. What did Jesus do in that moment? Listen, that man got a miracle. Why? Because that was all the faith that Jesus was asking for. This is what I would suggest. Stop doubting the faith that you do have. Start, start instead of focusing on the areas where you're like, man, I'm having a hard time believing this. I'm having a hard time believing that. Focus on what you do know is true, what you do believe is true. For me, I go all the way back to the cross and through Uh, to righteousness based on the grace of God and accepted through faith. I go all the way back there all the time. Why? Because everything else is built on top of that. So if you have to, every single time you have doubts, just go back to what you know is true. Go all the way back to the foundation and then let the Lord rebuild everything else on top of that. Because that's what all all of our faith in what God is willing to do for us, is asking us to do, is willing to do through us, is based on that. We need to go back and make sure, hey, I'm building on the right foundation. And when we do that, then those things are going to start sticking and those found the foundation is going to stay. And then those layers are going to start sticking and it's going to be so much easier to build on top of that. After that, that would be my encouragement to you. Uh, thing, uh, anytime your, your mind is being attacked though. Yes, absolutely. Pray for deliverance, pray against the works of the enemy and get into the word of God. And until you feel the peace of God, just come over you. That is the Holy spirit using the word of God to renew your mind in that moment to shut down the, the the lies of the enemy and to begin to speak truth into that, that situation, into that place. And the word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, or actually uh, better translated, the word of Christ. So what is it talking about? It's specifically talking about the word about Christ, it's talking about the gospel. So when we get into the word of God, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I mean, you, it, it happens in the whole word, right? The whole word is... is 
points to Jesus. The whole word is uh, faith building. But specifically, you want your faith in the power of God, the presence of God, what God is willing to do, to do for you today, what God has already done for you. You want that to increase and, and the foundation to be solidified. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the letters in the New Testament. The writings of Paul, the writings of Peter, the writings of John, the different letters there. Because the gospel as we know it, some people don't know this, but the gospel as we know it is not preached in the Bible until the New Testament letters. It's not preached until the New Testament letters. Jesus preached the, the, the kingdom is at hand. Right. And Jesus preached the new birth. But Jesus never fully preached the gospel as we know it, because that was a revelation that Paul talks about that the Holy Spirit revealed to him and to the apostles for the church in the New Testament. Right. After the ascension and after the Holy Spirit came, suddenly they started getting this revelation of, wow, this is what Jesus did. This is why he did what he did. You know, I mean, or if they had had the revelation, listen, they would not have stood on the hill and kept looking up. And, you know, after he ascended go and thinking, what next? <laughs> you know, the angels had to come and tell him, hey, why are you still looking up at heaven? He's gone. You know, go do what he, he told you to do. Right. Why? Because they hadn't had the revelation of what he had done yet. They thought, well, what? Well, you just left us. <laughs> what are we doing? What do we do? Right. But then suddenly the Holy Spirit began to preach the gospel to them. And the that's what the New Testament letters were birthed out of. And when we get into the, the letters in the New Testament and we allow the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel to us over and over and over and over again, it solidifies the foundation upon which everything else is built. And all of that doubt and all that unbelief has to go. And sometimes it just takes getting in and reading until the Holy Spirit begins to speak. So I hope that's encouraging. I'm, I'm going to hop off. Uh, I hope this whole video has been encouraging. Y'all don't forget to go uh, watch my video on my newly revamped channel it's called The Mysterious Truth is the name of the channel now. And um, it was Troy Black Teaching, but we're going to be doing a new type of video. The first video is all about the Nephilim. If you could do me a huge favor, please go watch that full video. If you, It's about 10 minutes long. If you could watch the full thing, that'd be a huge help for me, a huge boost for the channel. Um, and we're going to be posting more videos like that one um, that are all geared toward doing kind of a history channel type of thing for about eight minutes or 80% of the video. And then we're going to be either sharing the gospel or um, share any spiritual truth. Uh, and we're trying to get these videos to a place where they could, yes, be entertaining and encouraging for believers, but also something that unbelievers would be willing to watch at least up to that point and hopefully listen to the rest of it. So that's kind of the, that's the perspective and that's the vision for it. But it would help me if you, if you could take about 10 minutes at some point this week and go watch that video. I love you all so much and I will see you next time.